Let's try working a problem. During a fireworks display, a shell is shot into the air with an initial speed of 70 meters per second at an angle of 75 degrees above the horizontal. While reading this, I'm going to go ahead and make a sketch. Here's my Y and my X axes. To try and get my mind around what's going on here. So we'll have some initial velocity here that's equal to that 70 meters per second. And we can split that into X and Y components. We'll have an X component here, VX, that should be equal to whatever the magnitude of that initial velocity is times the cosine of the angle that we make with the x-axis. So if we have some angle here, theta of 75 degrees, we can multiply this by the cosine of 75 degrees, and we'll get our initial velocity in the x-direction. So this was initial velocity, initial velocity, initial velocity. And I think frequently we write it like this here. We can then also get the y component of that velocity. So this will be v naught in the y direction that will equal similarly to what we did before. Just write it over here. This will be v naught times now the sine of that angle that we make with the x-axis. Lovely. So the fuse is time to ignite the shell just as it reaches its highest point. All right, the highest point above the ground. One thing we know about the highest point is that the velocity in the y direction has to equal zero at that highest point because before it had a positive velocity as it was going up, after it has a negative velocity as it's going down, so it passes through zero velocity in the y direction as it's reaching its highest point. So this goes over and we reach some highest point over here where vy is equal to zero. Now we want to calculate the height at which the shell explodes. So I want to know what is y. So find y. All right, we'll split this up into x and y components. So looking at the x direction or the horizontal direction, I can write my expressions for constant velocity motion. So my initial velocity in the x direction is equal to just plugging in numbers to this expression we have from over there. 70 meters per second is the initial speed times cosine of 75 degrees. And we get an initial x velocity of 18.1 meters per second. And then our initial x position is zero, which we'll start at the origin. All right, looks good so far. Let's move on to the Y. So for the vertical motion, or the Y directional motion, we have constant acceleration in the Y direction. Well, our initial Y velocity is 70 meters per second times the sine of 75 degrees, which gives us 67.6 meters per second as our y velocity going upward. Our initial height is zero. Yeah, and then we're trying to find the final height. So we want to find the final height. And we know that our final velocity is equal to zero. So we can look at our constant acceleration equations and see if there's something that lets us solve for that final height. And this one looks like the most promising to me. Vy squared is equal to V naught Y squared minus twice gravity times Y minus Y naught. And I say that looks the most promising because as we go through, we can substitute in things and say, I know this one zero. I know what gravity is. I know that my y naught is zero, and I'm left with just one unknown that I need to solve for here, which is the unknown that we want, right? It's this y. So we'll do some algebra and add 2gy to both sides. 
rewrite it. So we get 2gy is equal to v naught y squared. We can now divide by 2gy, or divide by 2g, cancel it out on the left, and we get an expression for y that says that my height at this point in time should be my initial velocity squared over twice gravity. We can plug in the values that we know for these quantities. And we end up with a number, when you plug this in, that should be around 233 meters in the air. Lovely. So this horizontal stuff we didn't really end up using. I was just writing it down to keep track of it. We're calculating the height at which the shell explodes. We just needed the y components. Let's move on and consider some other parts. How much time passes between the launch of the shell and the explosion? We can use our constant acceleration in the y and solve this for what we want to know which is the time. So we'll subtract our initial velocity in the y from both sides, rewrite this, divide both sides by negative g, and again, we're solving for this time, t. So we get an expression for that time, we plug in the things we know, we evaluate it, and we get the amount of time it takes to reach that height is 6.9 seconds. How about the horizontal displacement of the shell when it explodes? Well, this is where we need to incorporate that shared time. We know the amount of time that's passed to get to that height at 6.9 seconds, and we know that that time is shared with the x-directional motion. So we'll go back to our x equations and say that my x position is equal to my initial x position plus my x velocity times the time. We have values for all of these things, so we'll plug those in, noting that this 6.9 seconds came from the y directional calculation. We can evaluate that and we get our x position that we've traveled by the time that we've reached that final height, we've managed to travel 125 meters in the x direction. So what's our total displacement from the point of launch to the highest point? We can combine our x direction and our y direction to get an overall positional vector with some resulting direction as well. So the total displacement, if we want, we could just write it as the x component in the i hat plus the y component in the j hat with units. So my positional vector, my final position as the displacement from my initial launch point is 125 in the i hat plus 233 in the j hat with in units of meters. If I want that as a magnitude and direction, what I can do is I can use this right triangle to uh, guide me. So I can get the magnitude of this side will be squaring each of these sides, adding them together and taking the square root using the Pythagorean formula. So we'll do that and get a total distance that we are away of 264 meters. And then for the direction that we're in, we can take the tangent of this angle phi to get y over x. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. And if I want to get the angle back, I can take the inverse tangent. So we'll take the inverse tangent of both sides and the inverse tangent of my y value over my x value gives me an angle of 61.8 degrees. So I could write my total displacement in component form here with x and y components, or I could write it here as a magnitude of 264 meters in a direction of 61.8 degrees above the horizontal.